Hi, this is Jessica DeMassa in the Guidewell Insights Lounge at Exponential Medicine 2017. And joining me right now, I have Dr. Leslie Saxon. She is the founder and executive director for the USC Center for Body Computing. And what I'm understanding is that you've built something called the Virtual Care Clinic. So you gave me a beautiful definition of what that is and what that means and well, before this interview started. So tell me again, the Virtual Care Clinic, what is it? Yeah, great question. So the Virtual Care Clinic is really a concept that we came up with in 2015 to center and direct our work. So imagine a model of healthcare that's always available, driven by data that you're continuously collecting off your body and about your environment, your nutrition, your activity, and then delivers back to you personalized healthcare throughout your whole life. And you don't have to be in a bricks and mortar building to get it. And you have access. Uh, access to the world's best ex experts. Okay, so Leslie, this sounds like the dream come true here, like the holy grail that everybody's been looking for. So how does it work? Like, how is this even possible? So I think part of it, it's, it's, a, it's a great vision, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, and we have technologies and the internet and ubiquity of cell phones. So we have things that now scale and that are in enough people's hands or cloud storage or analytics um, that can deliver accurate information to people and collect accurate information from them you can then match that up and be able to help provide their health care. And that, to me, the most, as a 25 person in practice for 30 years, the most impactful thing about it is we really leverage the patient. So you think about a lot of health care, it's not particularly democratic. Right. We kind of tell you what to do. We listen, you know, you're undressed. It happens once and then yeah, you're like, you're gone. All over. <laughs> so this is really about leveraging the patient allowing them to participate actively in their care through education, mm -hmm. through the best knowledge and access to the best experts, the best diagnostics. And then you've really got kind of a partnership driven model of care that's always available to you. And this is really conceptual. And so for those watching, you did um, one of the things that helped me kind of understand it was when you explained some of the different technologies that were converging together. And so I think you had said, yeah, so, you know, where we're at with sensors and then- Yeah, people... so we have sensors even within, you know, your smartphone that can track you pretty accurately. And, and a lot of smartphone companies like Apple actually provides a software platform to be able to bring all, all this data in and then we can analyze it and deliver it back to you in ways that are important for your health or anyone else's you might be managing. It also saves money because it keeps people out of expensive systems. Sure. It allows the expensive systems to use their bricks and mortar well and allows their experts that are a big cost for them to extend over much larger populations of patients. So an algorithm might be managing you until a certain point, but then when you need the specialists that you need, you've got them. Right. And they have the time to see you and actually spend the time with you. But in the meantime, let's say it's your it's your breast cancer or something else, you've been completely educated about that before you hit the doctor. Mm -hmm. So that's a big thing. So the virtual care clinic, I mean, because it's kind of always on and always around you, um, and you had just mentioned the, the, the cost savings that would come out of that and helping make care more affordable. I was curious on the other side of that. How, how do you, do, do payment models need to evolve to match the virtual care clinic or will what we have for the paying care? They absolutely care? need to evolve, but the, they, are, they are evolving that make this more possible. For instance, in the United States with affordable care, we're not paid per procedure, right. per in-person person visit, we're paid for outcomes. Mm -hmm. So this is the ultimate way to assess outcomes, but it's more of a continuous outcome. Yeah. It's not just like I'm measuring you at this point, this point, I'm always measuring you. So the promise of that is I pick up your stuff really early. You do better, yeah. less cost to the system. Sure. You are enfranchising that model. So your behavior really changes because you understand it and you feel better. And I'm partnering with you versus saying, don't be obese, don't smoke. You know, <laughs> we're actually working, working together, together to help you overcome and now that thing. you are actually treating patients in the virtual care clinic. We are, and we're helping aggregate the available technologies. We're doing the studies that show that it's safe and effective. Right. Because all therapy has to be safe and effective. Sure, of course. Right? And that it works better than what we have now. So that all takes a lot of science and hard work, but it's all good. And with the providers that are participating in this, what's been their reaction? That they can, for the providers, for the doctors, it's like, hey, we can practice at the top of our license. I don't have to repeat the same thing in a degraded way over the data by patients. Something else can do that. And I'm actually there for the people who need me. So it's, for doctors, it's incredibly liberating. For patients, it's on demand. Access to experts, and who doesn't want that? And more importantly, I almost think is access to really good information, which patients really struggle with. Now that they have that information, like we've, we've, we hear so much about the empowered patient. Do you find that, you know, when they do get the information in this way where it is continuous, are, are they really empowered with that? I mean, I feel like it gives people more of a dog in the fight. 
then it's almost as if you if you said to me, would you rather have a conversation about global events with somebody who doesn't know how to read or somebody who reads the New York Times every day? Yeah. You know, that's going to be a richer conversation. They're going to have more of a, an ability to, you know, to participate to in the conversation. And it's also because you're meeting their needs. Yeah. You know, in a way that traditional care doesn't meet patients' emotional and a lot of times their informational needs in the way that it could and should. What's your greatest hope for the virtual care clinic? That I could scale experts to everyone in the globe, less so a basic human right is access to healthcare, right? So right. few people have it. That we can use these digital tools to provide that would be like an amazing thing. Definitely. Yeah. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you and participate in this or help you scale it up, how do they find the virtual care clinic? Um, Saxon at USC.edu. Ah, there you go. Center for Body Computing USC. Fantastic. Okay. Well, Leslie, thank you so much thank for joining you. us here in the Guidewell it. Insights okay. Lounge. It's a pleasure you. to speak with you. Um, I definitely look forward to this becoming like a true model of care that someone like me would have access to because it sounds incredible. I know. It's, it's, it could be good. Game thank changer. You. Thanks so okay. much, Leslie. I'm Jessica DeMassa here in the Guidewell Insights Lounge at Exponential Medicine 2017. Thanks so much for joining us.